this is likely going to be a long process. A lot just seeing what a potential asking price for Damian Lillard could be. It comes to Miami, I think for the Blazers, their focus is elsewhere. I'm going to give you a disclaimer in this video. We go full mad scientist mode in this upload, primarily because the Damian Lillard trade situation got to a point where things are very, very, very complicated. Enough so where I figured that I would simplify it for you guys in this video. But before we get to the content, we are running back our giveaway, giving away $1,000 to split between five subscribers that turn on our notifications on this channel. And now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? At this point, last week, we finally got what we wanted. It took Damian Lillard some time, but he finally realized that, hey, you know, the Portland Trailblazers drafted a guard last year within the top 10 in the NBA draft. And hey, the Portland Trailblazers quite literally drafted my replacement with the third overall pick in this year's NBA draft. And whoa, they also extended Jeremy Grant and decided to pay him $160 million over five years. Huh. I think this team isn't trying to contend. I think they're rebuilding. I'm going to demand a trade. Yeah, it took him quite some time to figure that one out, but he finally was able to figure it out. The Portland Trailblazers aren't trying to contend at all whatsoever. That combined with the fact that Damian Lillard is the oldest player on the Portland Trailblazers roster, it makes a lot of sense for him to finally demand or request a trade. Speaking of which, there are a few comments on that video saying, Mike, he didn't demand a trade. He requested a trade. What's the difference? Well, do you think an NBA player requesting a trade is him just going to the general manager and saying, hey, I would like to be traded right now over some milk and cookies as opposed to him demanding a trade, being him rolling up with his agent, kicking the door down, say, hey, if you don't trade me right now, I'm going to burn this whole building down. I demand a trade. No, man, it's the same freaking thing. With that being said, now that Damian Lillard officially demanded a trade, there is a whole new question to ask. What team is he? most likely to be traded too. Now this is where it gets a little funny and a little comical. The very first thing you need to know about this situation is that players are reportedly monitoring how the Portland Trailblazers treat Damian Lillard on his way out. I'm sorry, but I don't buy it. You're not gonna have free agents in the future saying, hey, you know, we could sign with the Los Angeles Lakers or we could sign with the New York Knicks or sign with the Miami Heat. You remember that one time Damian Lillard demanded a trade and the Portland Trailblazers traded him to whatever team he wanted? I think we're gonna sign with Portland instead. That's not how the NBA works. I think this is a BS report probably from Damian Lillard's camp, if I'm being honest, or the Miami Heat's camp. This is where things get really, really interesting. The man that quite literally stated on multiple occasions that he refuses to run away from the grind, that he doesn't wanna play for a super team, wants to play for one team and one team only, the Miami Heat. And there's so many articles about this from so many different sources. I mean, you have Sham Sharanya saying there remains a strong belief, a deal to Miami remains the most likely outcome for Damian Lillard. Rival teams are hesitant to offer a compelling package without the assurance that Damian Lillard would be happy to join them. Hell yeah, Sham's reporting this straight up. Watch this video. I'm told Damian Lillard only wants to play for the Miami Heat. Their general manager, Joe Cronin, go through the league and track the market and see what else he can get. Damian Lillard is the caliber of player and at the age where a preferred destination is the likely path. And the best part of all is they want you to believe that it could get get really uncomfortable if the Blazers try to trade Damian Lillard to a team other than the Miami Heat. Here's the thing. There was another situation that was very similar to this. It was about six years ago. I don't know if you guys remember. It was Paul George when he demanded a trade from the Indiana Pacers. At that point, he said he only wanted to play for the Los Angeles Lakers and whoever traded for him would risk only having him as a one-year rental. Eventually, he would get traded to the OKC Thunder. And guess what? When his contract expired, he re-signed with the OKC Thunder. The Thunder took that risk on Paul George, knowing that he could potentially leave one year after free agency. In this particular instance, Damian Lillard is more in a situation that was similar to what Kevin Durant was dealing with last offseason than in Paul George's situation. It's not like Damian Lillard is going to play for one season and hit free agency next year. No, Damian Lillard is quite literally under contract for two more years, but he's already agreed to a contract extension, a supermax contract extension. So Damian Lillard can't hit free 
free agency until 2027. He virtually has no leverage in this situation at all whatsoever. If the Portland Trailblazers want to do right by him by trading him to the team where he wants to go, that's Portland's decision. And if they decide to ship him off to some random team that is going to offer the best value for his services, then it's their right to do so. That's how a contract works. We're getting paid a ton of money and in return this team could trade you wherever the hell they want that doesn't make portland a bad team that doesn't make portland bad people it doesn't make them disloyal to damian lillard after 11 years of service no that's why damian lillard is getting paid the amount he's getting paid they could trade him wherever the hell they want and it will be that team's problem from here on out the reason i'm saying this is so far portland thinks that the offers that they're getting from the miami heat are terrible and that's what Woj is saying himself here what portland is doing right now is in taking uh, a lot of calls from a lot of teams around the league, serious to begin with, showing real interest, and a lot seeing what a potential asking price for Damian Lillard could be. Uh, Portland, I'm told, is not impressed uh, with what Miami has to offer them. So currently, if Damian Lillard wants to get traded to Miami, Portland needs maximum value in any trade. In order for Miami to trade for Damian Lillard, they would need a third team that could take on the contract of Tyler Hero. This could drag on for some time because Portland is going to take their time to find the best offers they possibly can to receive the best package for Damian Lillard, which is what they should do because now they need to do right by Shaden Sharp and Scoot Henderson and make sure that they're set up for their future, which is what we've said that they should do this whole time. So with that being said, what are some of our options? Well, it is thought that the Philadelphia 76ers could get Damian Lillard almost instantaneously if they parted ways with Tyrese Maxey. According to Brian Windhorst, the Sixers might land Dame right now if they offered Tyrese Maxey. I think Maxey is the prime piece. And again, if Philadelphia was making that offer, Dame might be in Philly right now, but they are not. Why? Because apparently Philadelphia is making Tyrese Maxey untouchable. According to Brian Windhorst, prime Michael Jordan is available. Don't call. 25 year old LeBron James is available. Lose our number. Giannis Antetokounmpo says, I want to be a sixer. If Tyrese Maxey is the ask, just keep walking. Man, <laughs> I don't want to say that Tyrese Maxey is the next coming of this, but there's so many instances where teams really buy into their own players' hype a little bit too much. And I hope that the Sixers are right in this instance because Tyrese Maxey is a baller. And of course, it's really exciting. What is his future going to look like? There's this huge unknown about Tyrese Maxey. He could be a perennial all all-star or he could just be a really good role player you don't necessarily know yet and usually you could leverage this hype in order to get yourself a star player which is not what i'm saying the sixers should do i guess i'm just saying this because i've seen so many instances of this particular situation i mean famously the los angeles lakers with talon horton tucker they wouldn't trade him for kyle lowry but eventually ended up trading him for patrick beverly he had the miami heat with tyler hero and they ended up extending him and now he's perceived as a bad contract which tyler hero still has some time to go but it's just really interesting to see whenever teams really buy into their players hype this way Tyrese Maxey is great but comparing him to a 25 year old LeBron James or a prime Michael Jordan is wild so the most likely teams that could potentially trade for Damian Lillard is one the Miami Heat obviously and then following the Miami Heat you have the Brooklyn Nets the Brooklyn Nets are loaded with assets following the Kevin Durant trade the Kyrie Irving trade so they could go after a big fish like Damian Lillard but should they is the question well what if they were involved you had Mikel Bridges praising Damian Lillard a couple of weeks ago saying that Dame is Dame everyone knows what he does and what he can do he's an unbelievable leader an unbelievable player everybody in the world knows that he'd be key for anybody any team he goes to he's one of the top 75 already an unbelievable player so wherever he goes if he does go he's gonna make an impact tell him Mikel Bridges even slid into Damian Lillard's IG live a little bit over a month ago just to troll him <laughs> <laughs> but Mikel Bridges also said something that I really agree with. And that's when he was asked whether or not he likes the Brooklyn Nets the way they are. Bridges said, I'm definitely a fan of who we have coming into this off season and coming into the preseason. So ultimately I could understand why Mikel Bridges would want the team to stay the way it is. It looks like the Brooklyn Nets are currently his team. They're committed to building around Mikel Bridges and making him their franchise cornerstone, which I'm a huge fan of. Mikel Bridges is 26 years old. His averages went up to a brand new level 
upon getting traded to the Brooklyn Nets. I mean, we always knew he was a remarkable player, but he wasn't averaging 26 points per game on the Phoenix Suns because he wasn't the Phoenix Suns top option. Now the Brooklyn Nets are his team. He's entering his prime years. He's going into his age 27 season. So I could understand why he feels the way he does, but I do disagree with him on one thing. That's the fact that there is one individual that is quite literally siphoning away money from the Brooklyn Nets. A player that was a former number one overall pick and that stole rookie of the year from Donovan Mitchell. A player who is quite literally the third or fourth best forward on their team, and that's Ben Simmons. Now, we've covered Ben Simmons extensively on this channel in the past, and originally Ben Simmons was perceived as a player who could be the consolation prize for trading James Harden to the Philadelphia 76ers. The hope was that if Ben Simmons could recapture maybe 40% of the player that he was on the Philadelphia 76ers and at the very minimum be a very good defender for the Brooklyn Nets, then he could potentially be the man that stops Giannis and Edekumpo whenever the Nets are in the playoffs. Maybe he can neutralize Jason Tatum to make Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving's job a little easier. But Ben Simmons struggled with back issues and some obvious mental health concerns and a clear loss of confidence. And it's really sad to see because he was an awesome player before this. But ever since Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks sucked his soul in the 2021 NBA playoffs, he clearly wasn't the same player ever again. We could all agree with that. And originally he got traded to the Nets. He didn't play for the rest of the season. By the time he came back this past year, he was a shell of his former self. He still hasn't developed a jump shot. And at this point, he was so rattled when it came to going to the free throw line that he refused to drive the ball inside. So you essentially had a player that is good at passing, that is not a threat on the interior, that is not a threat on the perimeter, this is a good defender. This is insane because the way Ben Simmons was playing is very similar to how you see some former all-stars play when they maybe tear their Achilles or ACLs. No, this is just a player that lost all of his confidence and is too scared to go inside the paint, which is bizarre. I mean, the result, Ben Simmons averaged about seven points per game off of 57% shooting from the field and dished out six assists per game. Truly insane numbers. It got to the point where it was so bad that his head coach quite literally said that there was not really a way that he could play Ben Simmons. It's gonna be uh, some work that we have to do uh, because you just take a look at what the lineups could potentially look like. Put another big next to Ben, then you gotta figure out what the spacing is around it. Then if you put a playmaker next to him, then you gotta figure out what Ben looks like without the basketball. Then if you go small without with Ben, then you gotta figure out can you rebound enough with him. The challenges are ahead of us. We'll look them head on. We'll figure it out. We have the personnel to figure it out. Whether it is me mixing and matching throughout different pieces of the game uh, and allowing him to have a group and run with a group, uh, that part we'll figure out. But you see, um, the challenges that lie ahead. So this brings us to where we are now. You might be wondering, what is the relevance of Ben Simmons in this particular instance? Well, despite Mikel Bridges saying that he's confident with the team that the Brooklyn Nets currently have in place, you don't want to have a max contract player that is quite literally your third or fourth best forward on the team or arguably the worst player that you have on your team. And that's the case with Ben Simmons right now. Clearly his situation in Brooklyn is not working. And clearly the Brooklyn Nets want nothing to do with him. They just extended Cam Johnson. Mikel Bridges is their franchise cornerstone. It's not going to work with Dorian Finney-Smith, Mikel Bridges, Cam Johnson, and Ben Simmons on the same roster. I mean, you just look at this roster, man, and I just don't see how Ben Simmons could get any type of playing time at all whatsoever here. You got Mikel Bridges, who technically is their shooting guard, but it does slide over to the forward position and has the length to play the forward position. You have Cam Johnson, you have Dorian Finney-Smith, you have Royce O'Neal. They recently signed Lonnie Walker the fourth, and then you got Ben Simmons. This doesn't sound like a team that is going to give Ben Simmons the opportunity to try to figure his stuff out. The reason I'm bringing this up is obviously the Brooklyn Nets would be interested in moving on from a player like Ben Simmons. And to be honest, man, I think the issue with Ben Simmons is 100% confidence. I don't think he just lost the ability to play basketball. I think Draymond Green said it the best here. 
Mm-hmm. You know the only difference between Ben Simmons in Philly and Ben Simmons now? It's confidence. confidence. But I know how it feels to lose confidence because I lost confidence in my shot. I feel bad for people that lose their confidence in that game because you're still the same player that was going out there and would get 15 assists before someone blinked. And if you just look at this footage, then you could tell that Ben Simmons just clearly needs to be placed in a situation where someone could light a fire under his and try to get that all-star back out of him. I know we meme him mercilessly, but that's just the truth. Well, the problem here is the fact that, well, no one really wants Ben Simmons on their team. He's a player that has two years left on his contract and is set to get paid $38 million this year and $40 million next year. So it's not necessarily the worst contract in the world, but if you're getting a Ben Simmons that's just gonna sit on the bench and isn't going to improve and is just going to be a superstar during the off season with his workout, Outs and then do nothing during the regular season, which we're not falling for anymore, I'm sorry, then obviously no one's going to want you on their team. But I do believe that there is one team that could save him. You see, the Brooklyn Nets view Tyler Hero's contract as a horrible contract. Even furthermore, the Portland Trailblazers have absolutely no interest in Tyler Hero. This isn't anything against Tyler Hero in this particular instance, it's just the Trailblazers have more than enough guards here. So with that being said, in order for a trade to work, they're going to have to find a third team to take on Tyler Hero's contract. That third team is probably going to be the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets make a lot of sense for Tyler Hero, and they want to move on from Ben Simmons's contract. And I believe a trade between these three is going to work out something like this. I don't necessarily know where the players are going to go, but I do know that these are the most likely players to be traded. Now, before we get to this, I am by no means a NBA trade machine expert. And in order for this to make even the slightest bit of sense, you can't just look at the players. You have to understand that there will be significant draft capital that would entice these teams to accept such an offer. So without further ado, this is the trade that I am proposing. The Miami Heat trade Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, and Caleb Martin to the Portland Trailblazers and trade Tyler Hero to the Brooklyn Nets. The Brooklyn Nets trade Ben Simmons to the Miami Heat because the Portland Trailblazers probably don't want anything to do with Ben Simmons. And of course, the Miami Heat received Damian Lillard as well. In order for this to make sense, the Portland Trailblazers would need to receive anywhere from four to five draft picks. The Brooklyn Nets would probably need to give up draft capital as well, just for the fact that Ben Simmons is such a horrific contract. And the draft capital that is given up is going to be the difference between this trade being accepted and this trade not being accepted, which I can't really include in front of you currently. But I want to make this a point of emphasis in order for this trade to work, a lot of draft compensation would need to be given up. The reason I like this trade is because I've mentioned multiple times on this channel that the Miami Heat have a remarkable track record when it comes to developing talent. I mean, they made Dion Waiters look good for crying out loud. Remember that buzzer beater he had on the Golden State Warriors? Caleb Martin was decent when he was playing for the Charlotte Hornets, but he really became the two-way player he is now when he went to the Miami Heat. Jimmy Butler was always a remarkable player, but he somehow extended his prime when he went to the Miami Heat. He's in his mid-30s and he's still performing remarkably. They developed Bam Adebayo from a very raw prospect into the player he is now. They developed players like Gabe Vincent and Duncan Robinson. And I believe if there's one team that could unlock Ben Simmons and bring him back to the player that he once was, it would be the Miami Heat. Now, what are the odds of this happening? I'm not necessarily sure. I do think it makes sense for all sides, especially if the trail Blazers get like five first round picks, which is what their prerogative would be here in this instance. They also get Kyle Lowry, who could be a mentor to Scoot Henderson for a season. The Nets get out of Ben Simmons' contract and they add shooting. But at the same time, when I posted this onto my Twitter account, I was kind of memed mercilessly. So it, it could be something else. I'm not necessarily a NBA trade machine person, but I have to admit it would be very, very, very wild to see the Miami Heat somehow be able to come out of this with Damian Lillard and Ben Simmons. And I believe they could actually save Ben Simmons' career if this were to happen. So let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think about all this. I know it's a lot of information, including my own little speculation towards the end. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.